social injustice is a real thing, and so if something has to be done, I feel like if we have the means to do it, then we should do it. Vigilante justice is rearing its head again. Could the act of hacking be one of the only ways to protect online civil liberties? It's hackers and coders and geeks that are the new guardians of civil liberties. The mysterious group Anonymous has struck again with a warning. This is just the beginning. Anonymous recently staged protests in several cities, alleging, among other things, the church tears families apart. The city of Orlando is arresting people for feeding the homeless. Anonymous cyber hackers have taken up the cause, calling on people to boycott Orlando. The global activist hacker group Anonymous is taking credit for yet another infiltration, this morning all in the name of charity. This time their target is an intelligence think tank, potentially compromising thousands of high-profile clients from TV networks to the U.S. government. Receipts they posted show donations to the Red Cross and Save the Children Foundation, a modern-day Robin Hood. This morning, Steubenville, Ohio, is under siege. How do you sleep at night? Angry protesters here in town and online are demanding justice for a 16-year-old teen who was allegedly sexually assaulted in August by two high school football stars. The fresh anger comes after this video was leaked by the internet activist group Anonymous. She's deader than a doornail. <laughs> Another photo circulated by Anonymous purportedly shows two of the accused men carrying the alleged unconscious victim. Social media is now ablaze with angry comments accusing police and local government of slowing down the investigation to protect the high school's beloved football program. Anonymous has targeted or threatened to target many organizations over the past few years, from the Church of Scientology to Warner Brothers Music, the State of Israel, the FBI, Casey Anthony, Formula One, and possibly their biggest get, the city of Orlando, Florida. Now, clearly, Anonymous targets organizations that interfere with their values or people that most of us agree are kind of just jerks, like the Westboro folks. What does that say about society that we have to rely on this group to fill the void of a broken justice system? The hacker group Anonymous slipped a bug into Tor, then distributed their version in child porn sites in the darknet. The bug software allowed Anonymous to reveal the IP addresses of the pedophiles to the police. The hacker group has released a series of internal emails requesting that the loan numbers be purposefully mismatched from the documents, encouraging foreclosures. There is a case of a girl in Nova Scotia named Retea Parsons who very sadly committed suicide after she alleged sexual assault and these compromising photos. And the police took a year, investigated, said they weren't going to bring any charges. Then some activists started really kicking up a fuss online, some of them members of the hacker group Anonymous, and some new evidence surfaced in the case, and the police and prosecutors changed their minds, and they reopened the investigation and eventually brought charges against two boys. Anonymous takes on BART over cell phone shutdown. The Westboro Baptist Church. Most recently, this included plans to picket the memorial services of the 27 people killed in Friday's shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary. Well, guess who didn't take too kindly to that? That's right, Anonymous who over the weekend decided to retaliate by taking down their website, hacking the Twitter of Westboro PR girl, Shirley Phelps Roper, and publishing the names, addresses, and phone numbers of members of the Westboro group, along with, of course, a video message. Anonymous is also asking their Twitter followers to sign a We the People petition removing Westboro's tax-exempt status. And another petition is pushing for Westboro to be recognized as a hate group. It has already met the signature requirements. What Anonymous often does in their actions is expose the hypocrisy and the corruption inherent to these systems and then shed light on the issues so that it, it kickstarts the justice system again. But what it does in a grander sense is, is show the fact that there is kind of systemic problems when it comes to the justice system. I think it's a good thing. They should continue to do what they're doing. All that's necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. The internet 